Danny Segura for MMA Junkie. I'm here with Juan Archuleta, who returns on New Year's Eve at Ryzen 45 to defend his title against Kai Asakura. Uh, Juan, how are you? I'm sure you are uh, a little bit thirsty, a little bit hungry, but you seem in good spirits. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good, man. I'm excited to be out here in Japan, getting ready to defend my title. Uh, doing great. Yeah, man. And a lot of people kind of after the last UFC pay-per-view, they, they kind of put their feet up in the air and go, okay, there's no more MMA for the rest of the year. But no, we got a, an amazing Ryzen event coming up. And, and to be honest, one of my favorite events of the whole year, Ryzen always kills it on the New Year's, Year's event with the production, the way they present the event. It's just a, a really, really cool show. Um, for me as a viewer, as a consumer, I love Ryzen. I love the production, everything about it. It almost feels like watching a movie. They really make it into a show. Uh, for a fighter, um, how's it like? This is going to be your fourth fight in Japan. How's it been like to fight in Japan and, and experience this uh, other spectrum of MMA? Yeah, I'm the same way. Like uh, I grew up loving to watch MMA. And uh, Pride was one of my favorite shows to watch, especially on New Year's because it was so historical. You had great events. Uh, great fighters from all over the world competing on one night and uh, they try to make the best fights possible so for me it's truly an honor to fight on new year's eve here for ryzen and not only that i'm like the co-main event and i get to defend my title my mom my dad my kids my wife are here so i'm stoked man it's it's a dream come true um i'm it's my again my fourth fight fighting here in japan i've grown acclimated to the arena to the people just to the whole uh promotion it's been amazing yeah for sure man and um you're like out there in the future it's friday on your and thursday on mine <laughs> um how far off from the fight do you go to japan because i'm sure it's a it's a huge culture shock time shock um how far do you get uh how far out do you get out there beforehand i got out here 10 days before just so i could acclimate and then like it gives me the two days to kind of three days to actually it's like two and a half. Cause like you said, it's like 17 hours ahead. Yeah. So give me the two and a half uh, days available to acclimate. And then the seven days for the weight cut. Nice. Um, and is this something that you've always wanted to do rising? Because as, as you were mentioning pride uh, back in pride, there used to be more of a mix between sort of the Western uh, fighters and, and and they would go back and forth in, in promotions. Now it seems a little bit more segregated and, and I find it super cool. It, it almost feels like you're doing this like really cool side quest. And I, I don't say side quest is in less important than a Bellator title or a PFL title, but out of everyone, it just seems like you're definitely taking your own path. Like you're taking a, a very unique road here. Is this something that you always wanted to do or the opportunity to fight in Japan just so happened to come up and, and here you are in your fourth fight? No, yeah, 100% when I was with King of the Cage, I always try to fight uh, for Ryzen. I wanted this Asakura fight a long time ago when he had the title because I wanted to challenge myself and fight the best there was, you know? And so now the fight's happening and now I'm the champ. So it's crazy how things come full circle. But uh, yeah, man, like you said, I it's like a weird dynamic that I got put in and I get to uh, challenge myself. I get to gain multiple titles every organization i fought for i've won the title in and so you know there's one more thing to do and that's defend this title and then we're pfl and uh bellator united so it's time to go capture that title yeah for sure and we'll talk that in a minute but um i guess i know you're officially now a PFL, pfl fighter i guess but <clears throat> uh beforehand um how how did it work out with belter did they just say hell you can just fight for Ryzen if you want because you are one of the more names the one of the bigger names more known names in in bellator in the bantamweight division so how did it work out was it a request did they give you an option um how did this rise in chapter in your career uh came to be so when talking to coker i was told that this was going to be uh when Ryzen versus bellator had happened uh saki kabara was like well what happens if uh all your your fighters win like right. <laughs> you know like what's gonna do i have access to them and so coker granted him like the you know this is year one that i was with them and i have three more years contracted with them that they could use me uh whenever they want or whenever i'm not active with bellator or pfl so that was then it. right so you're two years in now 
um, well, this is going to complete uh, New Year's Eve will complete right. my one full year with right, them. Right, right. Yeah. And so I have another three years with them. Got it. Um, and, and I guess you, you don't have to give any sums, but but who who pays you? Like, does Ryzen pay you or Bellator pay you? Um, fr from what I know, I get paid <laughs> uh, uh, through uh, my or uh, I'm through Bellator, right? Like they Got it. they sign my check through. So I'm sure uh, Ryzen pays Bellator, and then Bellator pays me. Yeah, um, from my and, understanding. Got it. As long as the check clears, right? Like that. Right. That's all that matters. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get into uh, the whole PFL and Bellator merger. I, I want to get your thoughts on that and as well as um, that title over in, in Bellator. But uh, I want to stick with uh, Ryzen in, in Japan. Um, I was watching the pre-fight press conference. And, man, coming off UFC 296 with that crazy-ass press conference between Colby and Leon and then the season press conference that you got, you know, uh, Drickus Duplessis bringing up um, – Sean Strickland's abusive father and it just got it was just a really dark week in terms of like pre uh, fight trash talk and then I look at the press conference over in Ryzen and and it just seems like two complete different worlds I'm sure you've probably experienced that um, even just with the fans it just seems like a less toxic less I don't know negative um, less trashy maybe <laughs> uh, trash yeah. talk and, and, and hype um, what's it what's the experience been like to to witness that because certainly western promotion compared to uh the way um is done in asia is is quite different in in fighting yeah it's very unfortunate that uh the western style has gone towards that right like come on man we're there were a, a a blue collar sport um i feel like you know there's no need to belittle people's families uh you know attack their you know the religion like just all that stuff right like so coming here like it's fun. It's it's exciting. I can still be myself. I'm a happy go lucky guy, right? Like I'm a guy that's going to go out there and go and promote a fight and know that I'm going to fight this guy, right? Like I can still trash talk and have fun with them, but I'm not going to like belittle them. There's there's no way I could step out of character on my own sake to do that to promote a fight. Like I'm fighting this guy. I'm not fighting his mom, his dad, his kids. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to beat up Asakura, and I've been wanting to do that for a while. And come fight night, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Has it been uh, refreshing, a trip? How would you describe experiencing kind of both sides? Because in Bellator, you know, it, maybe it might not get to the heights of maybe that we've been seeing in the UFC recently. But still, you, you know, you, we've heard some stuff in the past that perhaps wouldn't fly in Japan, right? Yeah, like being out here is like crazy. It's definitely like rebirthed my career, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like you got the elder generation that loves martial arts like the first time i was out here i was eating dinner and this old lady came walking up the stairs and she was crying and i was like what's wrong with her and then she's like archuleta archuleta can i take a picture and i was like whoa like that was different you know that was like that was super humbling because this lady was like 68 years old you know and i was just like i was like what's wrong with her does she need help and then she just wanted a picture and then, like, you see little kids that are, like, five, four or five years old knowing who I am, just super excited. Like, I had the belts with me, and I let them hold them. They were so excited. And, like, so to see that is definitely refreshing, right? And, like, yeah. to be a person that people admire and to be someone that's a role model, like, that they're excited to see, not, like, like scared, like, oh, man, this guy's going to talk trash or, like, you know, just, like, a, a real – role model right like someone that I, I looked up to when i had role models like kobe bryant and dan henderson and guys like that that were blue collar guys i was excited to meet them because i knew their characteristics felt uh aligned with mine and it was super cool when when i met them yeah have you noticed uh an uptick in in i guess the, your your fan base demographic in terms of like growing uh japanese fight uh japanese fan base i mean you just mentioned the the example with the old lady there but you know Bellator's not really having events in in japan outside of the Bellator versus rice event obviously the ufc hasn't gotten japan in quite some time as well um i don't know if you've gotten to maybe see more of your instagram comments coming from from japanese fans and whatnot uh, how's that how's that exposure been out there yeah i mean they really fell in love with me like out here and it's super cool uh now the next thing to do is go give them a great performance and i know my especially with this fight uh there's a lot of people really looking forward to this fight. There's going to be like 30 to 40,000 plus uh, fans here 
I've tried to get uh, tickets, like extra tickets. I'm like, sorry, we're sold out. Like, I'm like, oh man, uh, cool. Like, that's refreshing to hear. Like, how can I go back and fight in an organization that, you know, has maybe 10 to 15,000 people there when I'm fighting in front of 40 to 30,000 people here in Japan? Like, even in like uh, UFC, right? Like, you like just the fan event uh, fair that's here is very impactful. And the crazy thing is how quiet it is when you're fighting. It's like very eerie. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, from watching from home, it looks crazy. I can't imagine what it's like to to actually be there and, and fighting. Obviously. Um, and let's talk about your opponent, Kai Sakura. He's like one of the more knowns. He's a star there, and as far as like the MMA scene goes, you mentioned that you've been wanting to fight this guy for quite some time. Um, talk to us. Uh, give us uh, the, the rundown, the report on on him as a fighter, and how do you see this fight going? Yeah, he's definitely like a, a finishing artist, right? He's a he not he gets a lot of knockouts. He's um he's always in the fight, and so that's something that I have to make sure I'm careful with and not exposing myself or uh, trying to hurry up and getting things done is making sure I take my time and basically suck the life out of them before I finish them. So this guy is very dynamic, very fast, and uh, super exciting to watch. Um, he fights to finish, and and I'm looking forward to to going in there and mixing it up with them. For sure. Um, and I guess not now in talks in terms of like the grand scheme of things, you you go out there on New Year's Eve, you defend your belt. Um, will you continue fighting for Ryzen now that PFL purchased Bellator? Uh, have they talked to you about that? Like, what what does your future look like now with this Bellator PFL merger? Yeah, I mean, still don't know. You know, it's just like people. I I've even asked a couple people, like, "Hey, what's going on?" I even text Don Davis, like, "Hey, man, I was promised the Patchy Mix title. Is that still going on?" And he was just like, "Oh, there's going to be plenty of fights for you. Uh, you know, throughout the year, so we'll see." I'm like. Well, that's pretty gray, you know, like, I, I don't know what's going right. to happen with yeah. that. So, uh, you know, even fighting at 45 in the tournament, but, uh, you know, not, nothing goes my way or nothing's lined up. I have a huge fight, like the first champion versus champion in Ryzen here for uh, the this event. You know, I'm the first American champion in Ryzen. Uh, hopefully be the first one to defend my title uh, for the 135 division. And then go up and have a champion versus champion, the first and, and another like right history, right? Like things that have never been done before. Like, yeah, that kind of interests me a lot more than waiting on a fight for Bellator. Right. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like if you already have something on paper with Ryzen, like they, they would have to, you mentioned three years, right? Like they would have to honor that maybe, or, or is there a possibility that you just return back to PFL Bellator? I hope so, man, because like if I'm not active there, why right. am I gonna just sit on the shelf, right? Like from October when I fought um uh, um uh, my fight in October in Long Beach, okay, that's uh 14 months I had five fights and uh uh to now. Like that's what I want to do. I want to be active and uh out here I know they could keep me active for at least four fights a year, right? Like yeah. uh so like the activity really interests me, but you know, if I'm going to sit on the shelf, like a lot of the, like Aaron Pico, for instance, was on, I believe MMA junkie and was talking about yep. like, man, I might have to go back and wrestle. Like, I don't know when I'm going to fight again. Like at least here, I know I could fight. I, I know I could continue to promote myself, grow a bigger fan base, continue to, you know, finish my career. I, I'm, I'm not a spring chicken, right? I'm yep. 36 years old. Got about another four or five years, hopefully in me to make this run. And, you know, I, I, I want to be financially secure. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, yeah, Aaron Pico was kind of saying like, I'm up in the air. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, he was a little, he seemed a little bit frustrated with uh, the uncertainty. Uh, he's really young. Obviously, you mentioned you, you've been in the game for quite some time, so much longer than he has. So I can definitely uh, understand you maybe being a little bit more um, wanting it to be active. Um, I guess in yeah. an ideal situation, activities priority, but um, if all is equal, like, would you rather be fighting for Bellator or the PFL tournament, um, continue fighting in Ryzen, maybe a mix of all three? Like, what would be your ideal scenario out of all this? Yeah, I mean, a mix of all three is the ideal situation, right? Like, uh, if, you know, say I, w I win this fight, right? 
they say, hey, on Saudi Arabia, when we have our card, the champion versus champion, since we don't have a 35 pound weight class, we would like you to fight uh, Patchy. Right. It's like, okay, fight Patchy. And then, okay, when's the next Bellator card? Oh, we don't know yet. Maybe October. Okay, if it's October and you need me to fight on that card, I'll fight on that card. But if you don't know if I'm fighting until October, let me go defend my belt or fight for the 145 belt right. in Ryzen Well, I'm on the shelf, right? Like that's, you know, you're talking about being a global combat community, you know, pay forward for the fighters, like let the fighters do more what they want. Like this is your opportunity to show that, like show me that I could have my career with Ryzen as well as PFL and Bellator. Like, right. cause this is what you're saying that you're able to do as a promotion, be different be a global combat, you know, you're in a, uh, I'm in a very awesome position to unite three organizations under one roof. Like no one else is really going to be able to do that. So why burn this bridge or, you know, like why give it up just because you right. want me there. Right. Yeah. And if anything, if anything, Ryzen has done has, has bolstered your, your resume, your, your status as a fighter, right. You're a champion now. So um since they have you under contract if anything it makes them look even better right i would assume uh they would think that yeah, way right. so, so yeah so yeah it'd be it'd be it'd be nice to see you uh competing for for all three um and i guess um speaking now on the business side and i know you have your hands tied a little bit because you are under contract with with pfl but this is pretty unprecedented uh something like this we've seen the ufc right acquired the wec strike force but that's number one acquiring other uh promotions this is uh, you know number two or number three however you want to rank them still consolidating and now making a run to compete at the ufc uh which is something that we, we've never seen before really um a lot of people are saying like this is great uh obviously pfl is a great promotion bellator is an amazing promotion as well um clearly in my opinion the best roster outside of the ufc uh bellator and now you merge them together you got a a pretty big superpower uh but some people are always are also saying like hey less options for the fighters which is true right uh less fight cards for less work technically for for fighters um i i guess where do you fall on this like how do you how do you react to this news and, and what kind of impact do you feel like it has on the industry a positive one um how, how do you see this this change yeah i mean it's it's very strange right it's hard to compare um uh, organizations that are so different like ufc is very different than pfl pfl is a tournament setting and then they do their one-off fights that are uh, help fill the card on some of the things so you can't really um you can't really like compare the two because they're just it's a it's just a different show that you're bringing like uh and then the p now they acquire bellator you're like okay this is this is where you're going to have your big fights like what you're saying so it's going to bring another difference in what the pfl is doing compared to what bellator is doing and how long that's going to last we don't know um I think it definitely gives us different options, especially guys that are already on the roster and guys that lose in the tournament. They have their chance to go into Bellator and fight these one-offs that are bigger names, like Anthony Pettis, for instance. Like you acquire someone like that, or Shane Burgos that doesn't make the tournament, got in luckily through because Nathan Schultz got pulled out, right? Uh, and so they replaced him with uh, uh, Shane Burgos. Like if he doesn't make the tournament, you put them in Bellator to fight for Bellator on one of their one-offs and things like that. So it does give a little bit more options for people that are assigned with PFL and Bellator, but um, the consistency of fights ha are yet to be seen. And so it's just strange. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to think about it, honestly. Yeah. Um, are you mostly, you know, this is a big change, right? And this has yeah. a, a direct impact on, on your career, your legacy, um, how you make money, a lot of things, right, are, are on the line with this change. Um, I, I guess, are you more excited, a little bit scared? Like, how would you describe, maybe you don't know what's going to happen, but your emotions towards towards this thing, like, how, how do you feel about it? Definitely uncomfortable, right? It's like, man, yeah. like like you said, this is my living. Like, I was guaranteed three to four fights a year with Bellator, and uh, now you're saying there's not going to be that many cards with Bellator, and, like, throughout the year, like, that's kind of strange, and so you want to take for sure money, right? Like, at least for me, like when you have a job, you're like, okay, this is salary. This is what I'm making throughout the year. 
I know for a fact this is what I'm going to make. Might have to work extra, might have to work less, who knows. So that's where, like, for me, Ryzen is a little more, like, leaning on this way because it's like, okay, I'm guaranteed the fight's over here, but on this side of the, of the right. river, like, no talent. You don't even have a 35 weight class, and I'm, and I, you know, if I go up a weight class, am I, you know, going to be still active? Am I allowed to go in the tournament? I don't know. Like, so the uncertainty of like the unknown is kind of create is uncomfortable. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I guess um, now back to your career, I did want to ask because I picked up on on something you said uh, how you feel like you you've kind of been reborn through Ryzen and, and I was just looking at your record here and and um you know you did have those two losses back to back to Stotts and, and Pettis um the loss to Stotts was a knockout right. at the time I believe you were 34 going on 35 to, to a lot of people to a lot of fans and pundits maybe they go okay well the, you know this is kind of the natural course of a fighter this is maybe the end of Juan Archuleta but you you go out there you beat a, a very good Enrique Barzola somebody that I've been following for a while yeah He's very very good uh, right you beat him convincingly um, yeah. And then you go to a Ryzen and you win a title and all of a sudden you are on a four fight win streak, potentially on a five here in a few days. Um, it just seems like a, a pretty nice turnaround, right? Bro, I mean, those were two title fights that I came off losing to. And it was just like, bro, like, what the hell? Like, and I felt like I definitely didn't feel like I lost a Sergio fight. Like I put I was a champ that was pushing forward on the action. He just sat back and countered. It's like. How do you reward someone that's just sitting back and countering? Like that doesn't make any sense. And then uh so then I lose that fight and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I go in and I fight. Uh Sergio gets hurt. I have to fight. Um uh, they said, hey, uh, for the Grand Prix, um, we're gonna fight Stotts and uh do you want to take the Stotts fight for the title? I was like, Hell yeah, let's do it. it was dominating them, I felt, and they, you know, like going through just everything was going as planned throughout that whole fight. And he threw a kick, uh, was waiting for it to impact. Everything was ready to get blocked. And I took it on the forehead, the, his knee on the forehead, because I bent down just a little too much. And I, I, I thought I countered it, went to throw my uh, my my counter, and, like, everything just zoomed in. It was just like, boom. Yeah. It was, like, the craziest feeling I've ever felt. It was actually strange. And then I felt him come down to ground and pound. Uh, he missed the first one. I tried to grab him, hit me with the next two. Referee stopped. I was like, Damn sit in the back and i'm just thinking like damn what the hell man like what's going on like two title fights lost like it's hard this is hard to come off of now this is hard to come back and uh become a champ now like how do i what road do i take like what's available for me like you know just sitting in sorrow and then the barzola fight happened felt really good and then they i wrote coker saying hey i don't know what's next but would love to jump back in there as soon as possible he was like we're actually having a Ryzen versus Bellator fight. Uh, you know, do you do you want to be part of it? I'm like, yes, please. And so got that opportunity, came here. And then from there, they gave me their best guy, Sucho Kim, beat him. Then uh, they're one of the rising stars, a new way, beat him, uh, like popped my ankle in the first like five seconds. I was like, uh-oh, like this is going to be crazy. Like I have to battle through this. And I was going to fight Oscar Kura. He pulls out 10-day notice, had to fight someone completely different win the title all the stress is put behind me again i'm the champion uh like i know i should be and so going into the prime years of my life now now i get to show that yeah yeah and it's it's awesome because you've done your part and certainly um i, I think i agree you've had a, a rebirth and in, in these last few years have been great for your career but the universe if you want to call it whatever it may be has right. also done its part and then patchy yes. mix has looked pretty damn good uh since right. uh, you beat him and you're the only man that's beat him uh, he's got one professional loss, and it came against you. Um, and all of a sudden, he's champion of Bellator and looked good against Pettis. Um, it it kind of feels like you two are bound to meet at some point. I don't know if you feel that way. Like, before it's all said and done, a rematch is is, is going to happen, right? I hope so. You know, I, I that, that's something that I'm pushing for. Like, that's something I was told that was going to happen. I win this fight. Uh, so we're just waiting to see, yeah. again, what Don Davis and PFL and all those guys – and. Mike Kogan come up with this is like, all right, like we're waiting, you know. So I know they're working hard. They're I'm not saying they're sitting there like not planning things out, of course, but mm -hmm. you know, uh they're they're in there work working very diligently to make this first show for Bellator that they have, make sure it's it stands out. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I'm sure they're more than busy. I mean, a merger must be a complete headache. Uh, but right. yeah, I'm sure a lot of things need to get ironed out and, and whatnot. Um, so I guess ideally like 2024 at some point rematch with patchy mix. Is that what you would like? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Juan. Well, I don't want to take uh, any more of your time. Uh, we're close here to 25 minutes. I know I said 10, but it went a little bit over. Right. Uh, but That's best of luck, good. man, on December 31st at Ryzen 45, defending your title against Kai Sakura. Make sure to check that event out. One of the best events of the year and, and to close out 2023. So thank you so much for your time and best of luck this New Year's Eve. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, too. I appreciate it.